to another video for our medtech laws and bioethics and just like what i mentioned earlier so we're gonna discuss your republic act 008504 also known as the philippine aids prevention and control act of 1998 so your RE8504 is an act promulgating policies and prescribing measures for, first, the prevention and control of HIV-AIDS here in the Philippines. Second, is the nationwide HIV-AIDS information and educational program. And lastly, is to establish a comprehensive HIV-AIDS monitoring system, strengthening now the Philippine National AIDS Council, or also known as the PNAC. So technically, our RA8504 aims three things. That is to uh, spread uh, awareness when it comes to HIV, to stop and control, to prevent and control HIV transmission here in the Philippines, and of course, to establish now a very comprehensive HIV AIDS monitoring system that we all know now as the Philippine National AIDS Council. So... Very important details for you to remember, everyone, when it comes to the um, RA8504 is the title, The Philippine AIDS Prevention and Control Act of 1998. So there are a total of 52 sections in this uh, in this law. And aside from that, we have articles. So uh, we have around 9 articles. So you might be asking, sir, what are those articles for? So technically, the, your 52 your 52 sections are subdivided into 9 articles. 9 articles that we will be discussing as we go along your RA8504. So very important thing to remember that the date of approval for your RA8504 is on February 13, 1998. And it was uh, the former president Fidel V. Ramos who was the president at that time. But before we dig into your law, let us first discuss your HIV, okay? So your HIV, or also known as your human immunodeficiency virus, is a, a virus belonging to your retroviridae family. So they will belong to the retroviridae family. So as you can see, we have very important, um, very important markers or antigen that can specifically be found only in your HIV. So, HIV, just want you to take note of this one. We have your P24 antigen, and it is a viral protein that makes up most of the viral core. Okay, most of the viral core. As you can see, this is your HIV. This is your HIV, and the RNA, we the RNA of this virus is encapsulated by your nucleo capsid okay this is your nucleocapsid you can see that this one this are your viral rna which are very important aside from that you also uh, you will also be seeing some of the very important enzymes that this hiv needs for it to in effectively infect your cd4 cell so you have here your reverse transcriptase you have here your integrase and you also have here your protease so later on i will be showing you a video discussing how your hiv enters your cd4 positive cells how it infects it and how does it hijack your dna machinery for it to be able to make up its own protein so having said that okay having said that i'm um, having said that it is your CD4 positive cells that your HIV infects, okay? So, it's the only cell in your body that your HIV infects. So, sir, how does your HIV infect your um, your CD4 positive cells? This is now through the help of very important transmembrane glycoprotein in your docking glycoprotein, namely your GP41 and your GP120 respectively. So this GP41 and GP120 are the one that attaches to the cell membrane or the receptor on the cell membrane of your CD4 positive cell. Again, your CD4 positive cell is the only cell that is being infected by your HIV. So before we go deeper, so together, your GP120 and your GP41 together as combined will now become your GP41. 
120. So like what I've been mentioning, it is your um it is your CD4 positive cells, okay? This is it's your CD4 positive cells that is being infected by your HIV and this is very important for you to remember. Okay, this is very important for you to remember. Your CD4 positive cell, okay, your CD4 positive cell is also known as your T helper cells. Okay, this is this are your T helper cells. So they are very important in your in your immune system primarily because they signal your immune system with any infections that is entering your body. Okay? So going back now, so as you can see, um, very important things to, to remember when it comes to HIV is the P24 antigen again. So as you can see here, so each of the um, as we go along, we will be discussing what is Western blot and what is the importance of the Western blot pattern. Okay. So, but before we dig deeper into your HIV and into the law that we will be discussing. Let me first discuss the viral entry of HIV to your human cell. Again, we want to be specific what particular human cell it is only your CD4 positive cell. So right now, I'll be showing you a video. So technically, what you're seeing in front of your screen right now is actually just a diagram or a, uh, a drawing of how your HIV enters your human cells. But I will be showing you now a video on how your HIV enter your cells. I just want you to watch this video. Level, um, so this is HIV. It's a typical retrovirus, meaning that it has an outer envelope. And in the center, it has two copies of RNA, as well as an enzyme here in blue that's reverse transcriptase, which will ultimately turn that RNA into DNA. Um, the, the virus itself with this outer envelope protein uh, actually directly infects T helper cells. The way that it does this is that as it comes up to the cell surface, it uses receptors that are on T helper cells and exclusive to T helper cells, which are CD4 molecule, which really defines T helper cells. It's a surface receptor that binds to the envelope protein. It, that causes a conformational change and allows a second receptor to grab hold of the envelope. This is the chemokine co-receptor. It's also called CCR5, and we'll talk about that more. What happens now is that the, the, the stalk of the envelope protein pierces through the, uh, from the virus into the, into the host cell and starts to draw the two cell membrane, the cell membrane and the viral membrane together. And what ultimately happens is fusion of those two membranes and the viral genetic material is injected essentially into the cell and the envelope protein is left at the cell surface. The virus has a matrix and a capsid protein shown here in green and red that, that essentially are digested when it enters into the cell. That releases viral enzymes and the viral RNA and here we have reverse transcriptase, so which R takes the viral RNA, RNA reverse and using host nucleotides, converts that viral RNA into a single strand of DNA. While it does that, it makes some random errors, which is characteristic of reverse transcriptase. It has very poor proofreading activity. That single-stranded DNA now is again reverse transcribed into a double-stranded DNA, at that point, another enzyme that has come in with the virus in the beginning called integrase essentially grabs hold of that double-stranded DNA and carries it through a nuclear pore into the nucleus of the cell. Within the nucleus of the cell, it finds the host chromosome and it basically, the integrase enzyme, makes a nick in the host DNA. So from its, uh, from the name of your enzyme integrase it actually integrates the viral dna now into the host dna so let's proceed allows for hiv to insert itself into the host chromosome and that right there is what establishes lifelong infection now rna polymerase comes along and makes messenger rna 
Those messenger RNAs encode for different viral proteins. They end up associating with ribosomes on the, at the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And here's a piece of mRNA that's making envelope protein, which is directly produced into the endoplasmic reticulum. And it's shuttled then through the endoplasmic reticulum and taken to the cell surface, where at the cell surface, it becomes embedded in the cellular membrane. And at this point, coalescing with other envelope proteins that have been produced, you have this cluster of envelope proteins now on the surface of this infected cell. At the same time, there are other messenger RNAs that are being produced that allow for translation of other uh, viral proteins. So here are additional viral proteins being made, which are going to be used to make up the key components that, uh, that the virus ultimately is going to need. These are transported again to the cell surface, to the area where these envelope proteins are. And a strand of RNA, as well as a, some of the enzymes, are part of that complex. This then buds off at the cell surface at this point, but it's still not a mature virion because the polyprotein chain needs to still be digested into its component parts. That's done by an enzyme called protease. Protease breaks up those uh, polyprotein chains and ultimately allows for them to coalesce and form the mature uh, structures that make up the final virion. And now you have a mature infectious virion that can go on now to infect other cells. Once that happens now, the cell can produce tons of viruses, and this is really what then keeps the whole process going. So I hope you understood how your HIV infects a particular cell, which is now your CD4 positive cells. So it is very important for us to remember this because as medical technologists, we will also be um, the one testing this virus. So um, I hope everyone was able to grasp that. I will hope everyone was able to understand that. If not, I will be giving the link of the video below so you can watch it again so for the history of your hiv or your human immunodef your human in immunodeficiency virus so it is widely believed that hiv originated in kenshana congo so in kenshana congo so technically it was across a species from chimpanzee to humans so it is a virus that can lead to acquired immune deficiency syndrome or your acquired immunodeficiency virus uh this deficiency syndrome or we all know now as your aids if not treated so your hiv is a type of a virus called your retrovirus which infects now your humans so it contact with tissue that line with the vagina your anal area your mouth your eyes or through breakage in your skin could be the entry point for your HIV, okay? It could actually be the entry point for your HIV. I just want to make it clear that your HIV is not the same as your AIDS or your AIDS or your Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Later on, as we go along, we will also be discussing that, okay? So, what are the different modes of HIV transmission? So, a while back, I was showing to you the video on how your virus infects your CD4 positive cell. But how is it that your virus can be transmitted or can be passed on from one individual to another? Of course, number one there is your unprotected sex, whether that is a homosexual sex or heterosexual sex. If it is unprotected, it could actually be a passage or a leeway for your HIV to come into your body. Aside from that, Pregnancy, childbirth, and uh, and breastfeeding could also be part of the HIV transmission. So we call it your vertical transmission. So women who are infected with HIV could actually pass on their their virus to their to their to their offspring. It can also be through childbirth and even through breast feeding so maybe some of you are asking sir is it now possible for a pregnant woman an, an infected pregnant woman to not infect her baby eventually 
right now it's there are some studies right now that that is going around and they are successfully having that so technically the pregnant mother can still take in their antiretroviral drug up onto the the point that it, the mother will go undetectable so the viral is no longer detectable in their in their blood and apparently after that they will also still have to drink your antiretroviral drug okay so aside from that aside from at protected sex pregnancy childbirth and breastfeeding it can also be through injecting drugs so we all know as medical technologists correct um you you've been studying this in your pmls p2 that the usage of your syringes is only once okay so after usage using your syringe for one person for your one patient you would now have to discard that so for most people who are doing iv drugs or injecting drugs they can also have a um, higher risk of hiv transmission aside from that we also have here so i'm, I'm gonna skip this first where we have here your blood transfusion and organ tissue transplant so your HIV, like what we discussed in your um, blood banking laws last last week, we discussed there that one of the five major tests that is being uh, your blood is being tested is your HIV alongside with your HEPA B, your HEPA C, your malaria, and your syphilis. So it's very important because we all know that your HIV is blood can could be blood borne. So it can also be transmitted through organ or tissue transplantation and this are actually one of the things that we're also going to discuss in 8504 your your law so on the other hand we have here your working in healthcare so yes hiv could be transmitted to healthcare workers specifically when we do not practice your universal precaution again i hope by while i'm asking this you're trying to recall what is your universal precaution so universal precaution is actually technically treating all blood samples as potentially infected infectious for, for hiv or hepa b or other bloodborne pathogens so most of the time um this is very important for us medical technologists because we're in the front line we're extracting blood from your patients so technically um one mistake a needle prick a needle stick or splashes of infected blood in our mucosa could now lead for, to HIV infection. So, moving on, we have different biological fluid that can transmit your HIV. One of those is, of course, your blood. So, we already know that because your CD4 positive cells could be found in your blood and most of the virus could actually be found in your blood. Aside from that, we also have your semen and your pre-seminal fluid. We also have your rectal fluid, vaginal fluid, and breast milk. So apparently, all of those things that I've been mentioning on your left are actually body fluids that could infect someone. Uh, someone. So technically, if you're exposed to infected or could infected blood semen rectal fluid vaginal fluid and breast milk and if it is exposed to you you will actually have could you could possibly have your hiv infection so things that you should also remember you cannot get hiv through number one drinking the very the cash through casual contact so that's not that's not that's a myth okay so technically drinking water with um the very same person with hiv could, could not um transmit your virus sharing your your sharing youth facilities with them will not also um transmit your hiv aside from that sharing your utensils your spoon and forks your glasses your plates could not transmit hiv from one patient to another even holding them touching them that will not cause HIV transmission. Maybe some of you are asking, sir, what about your saliva? Can your saliva transmit your can your saliva transmit your HIV? To tell you honestly, your H your saliva has very low um HIV in it. So technically if an a, if an individual is infected with HIV and you try to kiss them, it's the risk or the 
um, the likelihood of getting HIV is very low. Why? Again, because the viral load in your, your saliva is pretty much lower as compared to this on your left. But maybe the only way that you could actually have your HIV because of saliva is if you drink a gallon of saliva from that person. Or, this is one thing that you should remember, if you have actually oral um, oral lesions or any oral sores and you actually um, came into contact with any of this body fluid of that HIV patient, HIV could also be transmitted to you. I hope it's clear, okay? So, your human immunodeficiency virus, your HIV, your HIV can lead to the disease that we call now your AIDS or your acquired immunodeficiency syndrome if left untreated. So, HIV infection is a lifetime infection. So, at the moment, there are no cure for HIV. What we all only have are actually antiretroviral drugs. So, these are drugs, antiretroviral drugs that actually limit or hamper the progression of your HIV within an individual. So your HIV attacks your body's immune system, specifically your CD4 positive cells. So there are two types of T cell. So there are actually two types of T cells. Okay, we have your CD8 positive cells, also known as your cytotoxic cytotoxic T cells. On the other hand, we also have your CD4 positive cells now, which are we all know as your T helper cells. So technically, your T helper cells is very important in your immune system again because it actually is the one that alarms your entire immune system that there is an infection coming in. So acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is the final stage of your HIV infection and not everyone who has HIV advances to this stage. Yes, so I want to clear that not everyone who has your HIV now not everyone who is infected with HIV will progress to your acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So, age is actually the stage of infection that occurs when your immune system is badly damaged and you become now more vulnerable to opportunistic infections. Technically, even the simplest um, infections that a normal individual would actually survive at if you have your if you are now having your aids and you are get infected with this one that will actually be predis that will actually predispose you to higher mortality so technically right now what's happening you have your your coronavirus right now your covid-19 that is being um that is technically spreading at the moment so technically if you have your aids you have higher chances of actually acquiring your COVID-19 and as compared to healthy to other individuals without HIV or without AIDS rather you will have uh, a more severe uh, manifestation of your COVID-19 okay that's why it is very important for you to to really guard yourself so hugas hugas ng kamay okay so sir having said that that your HIV is different from your AIDS how can we now consider one patient to have AIDS or not. So we talk about now your CD4 positive cells. Again, going back, your CD4 positive cells are an immune cell, an immune cell that is infected by, by your HIV. So technically, we count your CD4 or your CD4 positive T cell. For individuals who have your HIV, okay, for HIV patient, so 200 cells per cubic millimeter is our reference interval so for the normal range again for my quality students i want to correct that the the normal range or rather the reference range for your cd4 positive t cell is actually from 500 to 1500 cells per cubic millimeter so the presence of one or more opportunistic infection regardless of the cd4 count will now become your um will now uh will now actually be the possible cause of mortality if not morbidity among our AIDS patients so the higher your CD4 count the better so going back now sir if your patient has less than 200 um to less than 200 cells per per cubic milli, per cubic millimeter that is now the time when we will now consider your HIV patient to be a patient 
that has your acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Again, this this is your normal value, 500 to 1,500 cells. So technically, a little bit lower than that could actually be the cause of your HIV. And a little lower than 200 will now progress to your acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So technically, sir, how does it happen? Why are people with AIDS dying because of opportunistic infection? Again, go back to the video. Again, go back to the video. I again we mentioned there that your your patients are being infected. Their cells are being infected, specifically your CD4 positive cells. It is infected. So once it is infected, it can no longer function as your CD4 or your T helper cells. So technically, it cannot alarm your entire immune system. Now, hey, there is an opportunistic infection coming in. So no matter how um how big or how small that opportunistic infection could be that could actually lead to the death of our patient if left untreated okay so that i hope right now we're clear differentiating your hiv from aids because that is very important okay so again a question is it possible to be infected with hiv without developing aids Yes, it is possible for as long as you take your antiretroviral drug. And we actually know a lot of people who have been infected with HIV, but the antiretroviral drug is working well with them. And they have been um, HIV um, undetected for quite some time already. And they haven't progressed to your, haven't progressed to your age. So, I have been mentioning about viral load and your CD4 count. So they, th these are two different things. So most of your patients right now that goes to your RITM could actually be tested by viral load. So technically, they're checking how much uh, of the virus is still in your body. Sir, so when you say undetectable, does the virus literally is gone from the body? No. We just have a particular... It's still in the patient's body. It's just that... Um, according with regards to our criteria, our reference interval, it is somehow undetectable already using some of your, so um, it's already undetectable. Okay. On the other hand, iba, uh, the CD4 count is different because what you do there is you count your CD4. Okay, your functional CD4. Okay, so moving on. So again, what is the origin of your HIV? Where that it came from? Again, we actually have two types of HIV virus says your HIV. Okay, we have two types of your HIV. So your HIV one is the most common in the sub-Saharan Africa and throughout the world. So we have groups M, N, and O. So this is actually a pandemic, a pan pandemic dominated by group M. So group M comprised by a subtypes A to J. So technically, your HIV-1 could be subdivided into three groups, which is your M, N, and O. And among those three groups, the most pandemic or the, the pandemic group would actually be your group M. Okay? So aside from that, we also have your HIV-2, which is the most uh, often found in West Central Africa and parts of Europe and India. Okay? So most of your antiretroviral drug now could actually be specific for HIV-1 or for your HIV-2. Okay, so we'll discuss the the antiretroviral drug as we go along. So, having mentioned that now, so I just want to share this story. So, maybe you're asking why is it that HIV is very rampant or why is it really spreading in some of the places in Africa? So, there are actually some cases whereby um, men are being hired for sex with children. So technically, um, in this article, as if you're gonna read this, okay, so children undergo what they call as a, a ritual of cleansing. So they are actually um, paying sex worker known as your Hena, okay, Hena that actually would have sex with children for their cleansing. And actually, um, it's actually ironic that instead of actually cleansing the ch the child they could actually be just spreading diseases so it's not just hiv that could possibly be um transmitted through sex but also your your hepa b and other um sexually transmitted diseases so okay review what is the national reference laboratory for the se for sexually transmitted infections i hope you are answering correctly 
Okay, so moving on. So that would be the end of the, this first part. So before I go to the laboratory diagnosis of HIV, um, I am actually um, cutting our videos into shorter parts because I know unlike in our classroom discussion, um, there are a lot of distractions right now. So after watching this, I'll be cutting it roughly from 20 to 30 minutes and then I'll be giving the other part of the video so right now just grab some snacks take a break and i'll be seeing you in a bit so please watch out for the next video and i'll be seeing you just a bit okay